Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about the third uh, methodology of error analysis, which is system analysis. Okay, so system analysis is very standard error analysis in this project. Uh, but we found a lots of interesting uh, uh, phenomena, and uh, there are different axes. Different people use different way. So first, they use a system, but this system can be very simple system or very advanced system. Uh, if you use simple system, it's easy to analyze you know, where the mistake is. So some people, some, some task which, for example, uh, named entity task. If you know all the people name, all location name, you can just match it. But it's not enough. What is the remaining problem? That's how people use this, uh, how they analyze using the simple system. But for example, pe uh, some people in parsing. Parsing has a long history. They do research a lot. So they know what is the problem. And now the system is very uh, complicated. And they want to know what's the problem remaining, remaining they, what kind of problem they want to uh, um, solve. So they use the advanced system and try to figure out the errors. OK, and some people use just one system, and some people use multiple systems. Okay, I, I'm going to talk about this later. Or how to analyze it, one output or many output. And aspect of analysis, grass box analysis, black box analysis. I don't know, this is a new term for you. I'm going to talk about this later. OK, okay so system analysis, I'm going to talk about uh, four axes. First one is simple as system or advanced system. So uh, I mentioned this. Uh, when a simple algorithm can achieve a certain level of accuracy, like named entity with a dictionary, then this is a good method to focus on difficult problem, understand what is a difficult problem, etc., or analyze this, this uh, the system. And advanced system was used when the task is matured. We want to focus on the remaining problem, and we should analyze the errors produced by advanced system in this case, okay? And simple system is like this. Uh, oh, it, it is, this example is not named entity, it's information extraction. And their task is try to extract attribute or product from e-commerce page by word matching. So for example, if you're talking about the wine, they want to extract location, size, and type of grape, etc., from sentence. Then sometimes this kind of information was uh, uh, structured as a table, but not always. They may write in sentence, and we want to understand these issues. And as you see, see location, Bordeaux or France or, I don't know, Kofu in Japan, it's a limited. So you can prepare the location name list, and this, this is how they did. So they prepare the names of location or size or type kind of things, and match it, match this uh, dictionary to the sentence and extract it as a location. And then what kind of errors there are? This is very simple and they can analyze very nicely. The most biggest error is uh, partial matching. So if, for example, the, sent, uh, the dictionary has a France, but the location is North France. Then you want to get extract North France as a location, but France is extracted, etc. Yeah. Uh, this is big problem, so they understand it and they try to find out how to solve this. Or overlapping with other information and extraction from unrelated passage. So sometimes this kind of uh, the web page of the product talking about completely different thing. You know, this wine was inherited from famous France wine, which was X, Y, Z. But they don't want to extract the information from this passage, but the main passage, right? So they have to understand the related passage part in this page. So that's, that's a problem they found, so, so that's, that's nice. Not et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so this is how people analyze the errors with a simple system. And advanced systems, so 
is is done, uh, for example, done by I think puzzle, yeah, dependency analysis. No, it's a puzzle. In Japanese, it's ex expressed by dependency of the syn uh, the syntax dependency. Okay, right now it's achieved ninety plus percent accuracy, but not yet ninety five. So there are seven eight percent errors still. So they want to tackle this this seven eight percent. And they analyze what is the uh, errors, and they found this kind of thing: coordination, A and B, kind of thing. But it's, if it's always say A and B, then it's easy. But it's in the long sentence: A, B, C, D, and E. I don't know which E is coordinating with. Coordinating with, maybe just D or C, D or B, C, D. And in order to understand this, semantic is needed, just like I said. Oh, annotation error. OK, this is not system error, but now they are reaching, reaching to the point where the human, human error affects this result. Oh, the dependency between clause and coverage of rule, etc. So these are the errors they figured out. OK, so this is a. Uh, the benefit of using simple system, you may understand the benefit of simple system and advanced system. Okay, and one system or multiple systems. Okay, and I, at the beginning, I thought that multiple system is good because you no know, one system can make very specific errors, and if there are many systems, you understand what kind of problems in common in this task. But actually, one system is good too, uh, or necessary for some tasks. So if it takes a long time to analyze one result, one system is good. You, know, you don't want to spend lots of time for analyzing this system, this system, this system. Just one system, everybody analyze this results and understand what's the next to do. And in particular, if the golden data cannot be easily created, no, um, and uh, I'm going to have an example. That's uh, information retrieval. If you have a query and the ten results or pages, for example, what's a mistake? You have to read all the text and why they make mistake. And this takes long time, even for human, uh, or, or because of it's human to read it. So that's why they are using only one system. And, and uh, analysis of error, which needs multiple optimization, they use one system, etc. Uh, okay, and etc. Okay, and multiple systems uh, is popular method at NLP. Uh, this project, many people use multiple system, and uh, if we use multiple system, we can see the correlation between the type of problem and the type of the system. So I'm going to uh, explain this with a machine translation example. There are different kinds of machine translation system, rule-based, statistical-based, etc. And why rule-based makes this mistake, etc. We can we can find those pro, uh, those correlations. And uh, problems no system can solve are the most difficult problem to tackle in the future. So if any of the system cannot solve cannot make correct answer for this problem, that is a very difficult one. So that's a nice thing to know. OK, this, uh, this is an uh, error analysis on information retrieval, as I said, mentioned. Uh, need deep understanding and consideration regarding the query and the results. So it takes a long time. And this result, this, this is a problem they have. They have. That, that's great. No, this is not easy. You have to read 10 uh, top results for 10 queries, and they find why it's mistakes. For example, I don't know, system emphasizes one aspect missing another aspect. Um, like, uh, I don't know, uh, if the query is like uh, kids' school, Maybe you can emphasize one aspect like school. Then the result is not necessarily be 
kids' school, maybe adult school, etc., driving school, etc., or just emphasize kids, then that's not enough. You know, lots of kids' results is there. So you have to have a both aspect, kids and school. So some system output is emphasized only one side. So that's one mistake. Or some, some system, uh, system emphasize one irrelevant aspect missing point of topic. If, I don't know, uh, if the query is a long sentence, like query, uh, if the query includes interaction, like, okay, I went, my kids went to nursery school in location next, but it wasn't fun, so he wants to change the, system, change the school. Then there are many information in the, at the beginning part which is not relevant to the main query. So you want to exclude this first topic. So, but but the uh, machine is not smart enough to understand, oh, this is irrelevant. So they want to, they usually uh, extract keywords and search it. So they, that, that's, for example, this mistake, missing point of the topic. Okay, so I don't know, I'm, I'm not going to go all the details, but uh, these are the errors information extraction, our uh, information retrieval has. Okay, and uh, this is machine translation. So machine translation, there are many commercial systems, including Google, famous one Google and other things, and the open source software system too. So they, uh, and also they can evaluate human generated text. Uh, we can easily ask human to translate the sentence. So there are many outputs and, uh, for, the, for the same input. So you can do that multiple system very easily compared to the information retrieval. And they do the black box analysis. Uh, oh, okay, I, I'm going to talk about what the black box, etc. But the black box is, in general, uh, in, short, in short, it's analyzed only the input and output, Don't, not necessarily understanding the algorithm inside. It's a black box, as we said. So then they found the errors are missing words. Some, some are not translated or ordering. The word order in the target language is wrong or using the wrong words and modality, unknown words, punctuation, etc. So these are the black box errors. And the grass box error, uh, grass box error analysis is try to understand why, what makes this mistake. What kind of algorithm make these mistakes? And uh, errors are done by pre-processing, not like machine translation, but they, they have to use these uh, basic technologies like morphological analyzer, parser, etc. And if there's a mistake at the pre-processing morphological analyzer, they cannot create a correct answer. Okay, or rule is wrong, model is wrong, search is wrong, or original text is wrong. So that these are the errors uh, they analyze in the grass box analysis. Okay, and uh, finally they conclude that the word selection is the most difficult and important problem most of the system failed. Using the six, they use six systems and they found, okay, this is very common popular problem. Okay, okay. And the next one is one analysis versus multiple analysis. Okay, one analysis, create one analysis by one person or by agreement. So at the report, they, they have a, one single table of list of errors. That's, that's nice, that's nice to understand. Uh, and also, yeah, they sometimes have a golden data. This is a correct answer and this is, missed, uh, this is output and they compare the results. That's by no means can create multiple answer. Uh, multiple analysis. So these, these, by these methods, one analysis is created, but several groups do did the uh, multiple analysis. That's very interesting. Uh, uh, create the multiple analysis by multiple people and compare them, because the natural language is very subjective. You know, 
you understand this, uh, other people understand the same sentence, maybe different. So it's very subjective. You, people have to understand. So that's the difference. So let let make the different ex, uh, results. That's a basic idea. And actually, the analysis of errors by different people are different. I'm going to show you the examples later. Okay. So one analysis. So most of the tasks create one analysis. Maybe after the discussion, and if there's a mis very difficulty to make the agreement, some people, uh, some group allows uh, multiple labels. Okay. And uh, if there are golden data, it's easy because it's uh, it's one agreement is already made, etc. Okay. But the point is. Designing the analysis is the research. No. What is the what is the category of analysis? That needs some very deep understanding of the task. So it's 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 crucial. Okay. Okay, but but very interesting one is uh, what sense this amigation group what the what sense this amigation group did. They run a simple system on 50 data and ask seven people to make error analysis without discussion, uh, without directions. Okay. Ask, okay, this is a result. Please analyze it, please analyze it, please analyze it, etc. And they just did it. And the results are completely different. You know? Some people did a black box analysis, they categorize the error based on phenomena or comparison to the most frequent sense. So what sense disengagement is, in a sense, easy if you select the most popular sense. You know, in case of bank, for example, financial institute is the most popular world sense. If you select always the financial institute, then maybe 60% accuracy. You get 60% accuracy. So if you do this, you got 60%. And What's, when the system makes a different answer, why? And if it's a mistake, why? That's the way to analyze it. Okay, and some other people uh, did a glass box analysis. And uh, they uh, analyzed it based on how to solve it, what kind of resources are needed, what kind of features they do, and what is needed for machine learning. This is. Uh, this is another way. Okay, so so there are seven people, and there are seven different ways to analyze it. That's fun. And what they did is they uh, tried to do the automatic clustering of the results. Okay, and the, and the, there are seventy-five labels. So there are seven people uh, labels the errors, and there are about ten type of errors for each. So there are seventy-five in total. And because there are 50 data, so there are 50 examples of this kind of thing. So and they do the automatic clustering, and they identified nine causes of errors. And then after that, they align this cause of error to each of the results, and they, they did a very nice job on this. I'm sorry, there's no concrete data. Maybe there is? Oh, yeah. So this is nine causes of errors. They found the most errors is need more training data. They believe if they have more data, they can solve it. Or they need deep semantic knowledge. I believe this is one of the very, very uh, crucial problem in natural language processing right now. Or thesaurus, so that's a semantic, uh, semantic, what's it called? Uh, hyponym, hyponym relationship, I don't know. The elephant is animal. Animal is a creature, etc. That, that's kind of knowledge. If they have it, they can solve it. So this is frequency of the problem. So this is most frequent, less frequent, etc. So they understand you know, what is the problem in world sense disambiguation. Okay, and uh, glass box analysis and black box analysis. Okay, as I mentioned, the grass book analysis is what caused the problem. You 
look at the algorithm inside the system and try to find the er error caused by x, y, z. And the black box analysis is what kind of errors we observe. Looking at the input and output and categorize the error. And this is, this is crucial and not so many people understand this before once we have done this. So some people mix the error analysis between the grass box and black box, but they have to separate it. We have to pay special attention to this issue. And uh, yeah, cross, uh, cross analysis between these two could show us useful insight. Okay. Yeah, actually, this was done very nicely with uh, automatic summarization group. And they understand, they try to analyze this uh, summarization task. And in, if you do automatic summarization, you have to satisfy the following three conditions. Readability, the summary has to be readable, right? of course. And summary has to be informative. No, the text contains important information in the original text. That must be summary. Right? And consistency. The text doesn't contradict to the original text. So original text and the summary must mean the same thing. So these are the conditions which, can be, which has to be satisfied by automatic summarization. In other words, these are the issues uh, which has to be, which are the requirement as a black box. So input and output has to sat satisfy this. So this is a black box, uh, the three important issues in black box analysis. Okay? And as a grass box analysis, there are five major functions. So this is because they know how to do the automatic summarization. So they know that manipulation features, parameter values, search, and information, knowledge, other important uh, functionalities to the system. So this is grass box, the five important issues in the grass box analysis. So, you know, this, all this problem or errors in automatic summarization can be expressed by uh, three issues in um, black box analysis and five issues of grass box analysis. So you can draw the matrix between three issues and five issues. And you can identify, all, uh, you can categorize all the errors into one of 15 uh, cells. OK. I think this, the next one is saying that. So a error can be categorized into one of the 15 types of in the matrix. You can write three and five matrix. And each error has to be, have cause and phenomena to be categorized in the matrix. Okay. And the important thing creating this uh, um, matrix is the method to find each type is different. Some uh, some errors like okay, readability and lack of features, you have to analyze this way. No. Or uh, no, different combination has a different way to analyze it. So that's something they found very nicely. And uh, yeah, an algorithm of the automatic summarization system may emphasize some type over the others. For example, sentence extraction system. So summarization can be done by extracting sentence. You know, if, for example, newspaper has a 20 sentence, pick up three top sentence by some score, then that can be a summary. Very simple system, but that's what we know that that works well. And uh, for example, in this kind of system, readability, readability problem is not so important because it just extracts the sentence. So sentence must be grammatical. Uh, so, so in this case, readability is not important. But if the summarization system changes the sentence, word ordering was shortened the sentence, readability is a serious problem. 
So different kinds of system need to pay attention to the different cells in the matrix. OK, so now I'm talking, I, I've talked about the, all the issues about uh, task analysis, data analysis, system analysis. But there are two more issues uh, we found very, very unique and very interesting, uh, error analysis method. First one is what if analysis. Okay, Not, uh, this is morphological analyzer. So analyze a sentence into tokens and find out a part of speech. And we know that unknown words is very serious problem in this morphological analyzer. Morphological analyzer is, has been conducted, has been researched for 20, 30, 40 years. So, we have done lots, but still the unknown words, newly created words, is not in the dictionary, and we, we make mistakes. So what if there is no unknown words? That's that's interesting question. Okay. And they did this experiment. So original system has unknown words. Okay. And the result is correct answer. Uh, correctly segment tokenized sentence is uh, 11,000 plus 154, okay. And make mistake like about 10% or a little more. No, 20% hmm? well, that's not very high. Maybe there are texts like uh, Twitter or something. That's, that's difficult to analyze, okay. And then, um, so no unknown words. So this, this is a new system, which doesn't have any unknown words. Okay. Register, register all, the, all the words into the dictionary. Then correct answer and incorrect answer. So it's improved. Okay. The, I think the number of tokens it's improved is this much. 10% accuracy improved. Um, originally incorrect changed to correct. So this is big number. But the problem is, okay, originally correct one changed to incorrect. By adding new, the unknown words makes mistakes. Why it happens? Or still remains incorrect, okay? Why these are the problems? Okay, and they found the, they, they analyzed, okay? It's not just one sentence, they analyzed um, a lot, but the, the main cause of the error is short functional terms in hiragana. Um, you know, some, some uh, Twitter words using very special expressions, like su itself is a word sometimes. I don't know. Su. Um, maybe, yeah. But there are many... Um, unusual expressions in Twitters. And if it happened to be hiragana, then that makes, that's confused the system a lot. So 154, it's not big, but still that can happen. So you have to be careful. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't have an example, but um, it have be, you have to pay attention that adding words could hurt sometimes. And incorrect one, so still incorrect to incorrect, even adding the unknown words, is that, that they have a system, uh, their, their system has a function that unknown word estimation, mis estimation. If there's unknown words, then uh, if there's a, this kind of condition, you can identify this is maybe unknown words. And this works too much. And uh, uh, still adding correct words, but they output incorrect results. Okay, so something like that. So they understand by this method. I, what I want to explain this is the methodology of analysis, and what if analysis can produce this kind of results. Okay, it's very interesting. I I, I want you to take back that that kind of method exists and you can try that. 
Okay, and uh, name and entity as well. So name and entity, dictionary is very crucial resource. List of names, list of people name, list of location name, etc. And it did, it improves accuracy 10% or more from I think the 70% or something like that. But uh, the results get worse in artifact. So location, organization, person, you can just add lots of names. But artifact, name of things, just general thing. There are lots of names in artifact. Are you aware or can be some, some name of the product? So that co that's caused a misunderstanding and the system was confused. The results is get worse. Okay, so the conclusion is any type ambiguity, uh, uh, okay, so, and also any type ambiguity. So for example, the same name like um, Ikeda can be a person, can be a location. And this kind of problem cannot be solved by just adding entities in dictionary, of course. You have to have a context understanding this is person name, this is location name. Okay. And uh, yeah, conclusion is uh, problem remains in the treatment for the complicated enemy types like artifact. We don't know how to solve this yet, not just by adding the names. Similar problem for the morphological analyzer. Okay, and the final one is relation to other tasks. So as I showed at the beginning, the structure of NLP tasks, NLP tasks consist of different components. And some components need perfect results from some other component, but not necessary all, all, always. So NLP application use many component technologies, it's, but it's not necessarily the case that 100% accuracy is needed in the foreign applications. Okay, so we want to know what kind of morphological, for example, we want to know what kind of morphological analyzer error propagate to review analysis. Okay, and they analyze this, and they found that the close analysis errors, uh, close dependency, it's a, well, okay, it's a close is a long chunk of, sentence, uh, of words. Long chunk of sentence, part of, uh, long part of the sentence, uh, and we want to. We have to know the dependency between you know, the uh, conditional clause and conclusion clause, etc. That's the one of the major cause of error in this application in the review analysis. Review analysis. We have to know this is a precondition clause or or main main part of the close main uh, close etc okay and uh, sometimes different opinion for different aspects are expressed in sequential clauses no the, the onsen is good but the service is bad sometimes they analyze bad for the both side and that's changed the review the sentiment of the review so that kind of things has to be accurately analyzed. And that's difficult for machines so if the sentence is co complicated. Okay. And also they did, uh, the people in what sense disengagement people did analysis that how much word sense disengagement system can help machine translation. So machine translation uh, what sense disengagement is one of the main issues. For example, you have to understand bank means which bank? Financial Institute? No, because the translation in Japanese or other language may be different. So you want to identify the sense to create the correct translation. And they analyze the errors in machine translation system. And the if you have a perfect well, since this information system, how much they can help? They found 50% it helps. Nice. And they found 20% they need final sense definition. Okay. They, the world sense disambiguation people use dictionary, Japanese dictionary or some dictionary. But the, sometimes the, the sense in this dictionary is not good enough. They have to separate the sense 
much finer way. Okay, over the 14% need more knowledge, 14% was, this is not the world sense disengagement problem, etc. Okay, this can encourage the people in machine translation because they know half of the problem can be solved by this. But because they found this, uh, what they try is that they define the word sense based on the translation. Assume the possible translations are the word sense. So only when the translation words, translated word, are different, they define these are the different senses. That's very natural for machine translation people. So they did this kind of experiment and the small Experiment shows encouraging results. It is very important but difficult to correct the data. So they have to create this kind of dictionary from scratch. So that's difficult. And they found appropriate sense definition for the application is crucial. So this 20% is a problem. Okay. And they they also talking about the relationship of word sense distribution to other tasks. Uh, semantic role labeling, syntactic analysis, maybe interesting future directions. Okay. Well, since this function is very, very important semantic problem. Okay, so this is uh, what they found. Okay, so from this project, uh, maybe 20 or more uh, error analysis, we can categorize the errors in this kind of list. And uh, I think this is, can be a good reference. Uh, if you want to do error analysis, okay, we have to take simple system or automatic system. Uh, let's see what's, if we, we use one system or versus uh, multiple system, etc. Well, we may need data analysis or task analysis. So you can just understand this task, this kind of information so that you can do the good error analysis. Okay, so thank you very much for listening and uh, I especially thank for the leaders and participants on the advisors of Project Next NMP. This is a big effort uh, by 200 people and I'm just organized it. And, uh, I'm not, it's not credit to me, but everybody working on this project. So these are the tasks and these are the leaders of this project and they work very hard. Okay, so thank for them and thank for or the audience today for listening to me. Thank you. <laughs>